Run Joe Stenja. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. Keep an eye out for part two to this video. Of course, there's nothing more to say. The trailer is only two minutes long, for Christ's sake. So, it'll probably just be me rambling about the exact same shit for 12 minutes just to get more views. But I'm sure you guys will eat it up anyway. You gullible sacks of shit. So the Silk Song trailer has been out a few weeks now, giving us a chance to look at things a little bit more closely. There are a few things I should have mentioned in my first video, so I'm going to take this opportunity to talk a little bit more about Team Cherry's new game. I'm also going to go over some Reddit posts that Team Cherry made like a year and a half ago. I'm sure those are still relevant. So like the complete idiot that I am, I missed a huge detail right at the start of the trailer. I questioned why Hornet didn't escape her cage until this point in the trailer, but if you watch this scene closely, you'll notice that Hornet actually seems surprised about what's going on. You'll see the silk start to form around her. After that, you'll hear Hornet make a startled sound as her eyes widen. So Hornet probably isn't the one causing this to happen. It seems likely that this is an effect of Hornet entering the kingdom, seeing as it happens right at the threshold to this new land. This could be similar to the Pale King, who grants the bugs within the beacon of his kingdom higher thought. The parallel here is that any bug that enters this kingdom becomes enthralled in silk. We don't really know what this means for the bugs though, but for now we should just assume that it's a bad thing. I mean if silk came out of nowhere and started to bind me up, I would be extremely worried albeit a little turned on. While we're talking about this scene, I should address the idea that Hornet wasn't actually captured. Some people in the comments said that the cultists might just be escorting Hornet to this new land. But if we look at the Silk Song website, we get a clear indication that Hornet was in fact captured. In her search for the truth behind her capture, Hornet will befriend surprising strangers, discover shocking secrets, and solve ancient mysteries in a kingdom full of wonders. In other words, the story will involve Hornet figuring out why she was captured. Do the cultists need her for some kind of spooky ritual involving bells? Speaking of cultists, people wanted me to talk about this guy because he looks like a penis. So let's talk about this guy. This guy looks like a penis. See, he's got the little hands and everything. But what's actually interesting about this bug is that he's wielding some kind of scissor blade, and he's not the only one. There's another bug with a literal pair of scissors. What's next? A bug carrying a sick hydro razor blade? Also, these hooks that I pointed out in the last video are probably crochet needles, and this ball that we see prominently in the Gilded Cities might symbolize a ball of yarn. So do these faceless bugs control these strings? I think it's a possibility. In my last video, I talked about how the bell cult might be victims trying to fight back against a haunting song, but it's not a strong link. These bugs could very easily be villains. I mean, they cover their faces. Anyone who does that is a menace. Massmaker implies that bugs need faces in order to define, focus, and exist. So by covering their faces, these bugs might be sacrificing their autonomy, similar to how the bugs controlled by the Radiance lost theirs. Now, I'm a little rusty on my Hollow Knight lore, but I'm pretty sure the Radiance was the bad guy, right? Another interesting revelation in this trailer is the fact that Hornet stabs herself with a lifeblood syringe. This implies that lifeblood will have a presence in this game. But what the fuck is this blue Gatorade stuff? Well, in Hollow Knight, we see a creature that might be responsible for Lifeblood's existence. But the fact that there is Lifeblood in this kingdom could imply that there are more than one of these creatures. That wouldn't surprise me. After all, there are several Lifeblood cocoons scattered across Hollow Nest. Maybe these cocoons spawn more Lifeblood producing creatures. In Hollow Nest, Lifeblood was deemed a heresy by the Pale King. Salubra mentions that drinking Lifeblood is a taboo and Blue Child Joni, who is strongly implied to be connected to Lifeblood, is known as Joni the Heretic. We don't know why the Pale King might have outlawed Lifeblood, but maybe it's just because he doesn't like people worshipping other gods, or drinking other gods... juices? Given the fact that the Pale King outlawed Lifeblood, and that Hornet ejects Lifeblood using a syringe, has created probably my favorite Hollow Knight meme ever, that the Pale King is an anti-vaxxer. Jumping back into some speculation, I mentioned in my last video that the new antagonist of this game is going to be related to the color purple. So I've been putting a list together of possible culprits. I think it's looking pretty good so far. I think Grimace would be a fine addition to the Hollow Knight canon. But I should mention that some of the bugs do bleed different colored blood other than purple. 
the moss bee bleeds green blood, while the ants bleed red blood. Does this mean we might finally see the return of the Noid? Of course, that seal on the bell is still purple. But then again, do we know if that seal is from a good guy, or a bad guy, or an anti-hero, or Hornet from the future? We just don't know anything about what's going on here to really say for sure. One thing I think I forgot to bring up was the idea that the silk Hornet uses is made of soul. Maybe soul in this kingdom is somehow transformed into silk, and Hornet is able to channel this silk, possibly thanks to her needle, or some other power. From a Reddit AMA, we know that Hornet's needle was uniquely made for her, and that it is a difficult weapon to wield. So it seems entirely possible that it contains some strange, convenient power. I mean seriously, you can't play music on a needle, guys. Believe me, I haven't tried it. Also, another cool change for this game will be that Hornet can fucking talk. So we might actually be able to have interesting dialogue trees with other characters in the game. The biggest benefit of this is that it opens the doors to having more involved romantic options. This is also helped by the fact that Hornet actually has a fucking gender. Unfortunately though, we won't be able to romance the Elder Bug this time around. Let's talk about this fight scene with Lace again. First off, I should mention that there is some kind of cage or elevator in this room. Not sure what it's doing there, but hey, there it is. There are also a few giant pipes visible in the background. But if you look, you'll notice that a few taper off at the end. I'm a little curious about what these pipes might be used for. Maybe there is some kind of material in these pipes that is extruded at the ends. Maybe there's silk in there or something. Some people have pointed out that rosaries might not be a currency system. Rosaries might just be one of the many different materials Hornet can collect for quests. This would explain why the rosaries don't stay on the screen, like Geo did in Hollow Knight. I mentioned in my last video that I think Silk Song will account for every ending in Hollow Knight in some way, and I want to clarify that. My reason for thinking this comes from a comment from William on Reddit. All endings are equally canon. We're not into true endings. You choose the path yourself. We'll do our best in all future Hollow Knight content to account for all of them. Now you could argue that since this was from August 2017, Team Cherry changed their minds. Well, here's my counter. Godmaster has not one, but two cliffhanger endings. Why would they give us two endings if they knew only one was canon? Even if the Shade Lord is transported somewhere by the Delicate Flower, Hornet still has some kind of confrontation with the Hollow Knight. Now I don't know how Team Cherry will make this work. As many have pointed out, the sealed sibling ending wouldn't transition into a Hornet sequel very well. But then again, how many people have even seen the Godmaster endings? They're kind of hard to get. Just think of all the normies who are going to come into Silk Song and have no idea what the fuck is going on. So at the very least, I don't think Silk Song is going to create a canonical ending for Hollow Knight. Another issue we need to talk about is whether Silk Song is a sequel or a prequel. I have seen a lot of people speculating that Silk Song is a prequel. Team Cherry has called Silk Song a sequel several times. In the description of the reveal trailer, it is called a sequel. And Team Cherry calls the game a sequel in their recent video update. So it's a full, Hornet gets her own her own adventure in her own full game uh, in the in the sequel to our game Hollow Knight. So, yep. so no, it's not a prequel. This isn't fucking baby Hornet fighting against the measles or some shit. Now you could argue that Silk Song is simply just a sequel to the franchise, not necessarily a sequel to the plot. And yeah, I guess you could argue that. But is Team Cherry really that cheeky? Let's look at some external sources to see if we can learn anything else about Silk Song. From some old maps of Hollow Nest, we do know a little bit about what the Hornet DLC would have looked like. There was originally going to be a Hornet fight in the City of Tears, but more importantly, we might have an idea of what the upcoming Backer Village is going to be. Some kind of Lion Village. So I gotta ask, Team Cherry, how the fuck is a Lion Village okay, but a Snail Village is out of place? What the fuck? And now it's time to jump into some of Team Cherry's posts from the two Reddit AMAs they held in the past. Most of these come from their August 2017 AMA, which is a little old and might be outdated. Their second AMA was in June 2018, but Team Cherry was really tight-lipped in this one. But looking back, you could tell William was fucking with us. Just listen to him talk about what the Forest of Bones would have been like if it wasn't cut from Hollow Knight. Imagine your favorite area of Hollow Knight, but a hundred times better. It was huge, and if anything, too much fun, if that makes sense. I'm honestly surprised by how many times Team Cherry said they were interested in giving us a third playable character. They didn't tie it to Zote much, but maybe our stay in Team Cherry's bug-themed world will be even longer than we thought. Team Cherry also mentioned the five great knights, hinting that they have ideas for them. 
They even did so in their second AMA. If Hornet is going to learn more about her past in this game, that might mean flashbacks. This could easily give us more details on characters like Fierce Dryya, Kindly Isma, and Mighty Hegemol, since we know next to nothing about these characters. There is also Grey Mourner, or Mysterious Zamir. According to White Lady, the delicate flower Zamir hands the knight was brought to Hallowness by one beloved, Fair Knight of Lands Serene. This flower might be connected to the flowers we see in the Lace Fight, which means this kingdom might be related to Zamir. But this connection is a bit awkward. First of all, Samir has this really weird accent that doesn't seem common in this new kingdom. And second, this flower connection might not even exist because these white roses don't exactly look like the delicate flower. And finally, even if this is Zamir's homeland, we probably wouldn't see her during Hornet's adventure. In Hollow Knight, Zamir kinda turns into a mask for some reason. Team Cherry has also hinted at there being more lore for the snail shamans in both AMAs. At least I think they did. So let me just give you the 411 on these shamans real quick. And by real quick, I mean we know pretty much nothing about them. They seem to have a deep knowledge of soul and void. The snail shaman calls the knight a little shadow, and he recognizes spells the knight uses that are composed of shadows, or void. But despite knowing what void is, the snail shaman is still surprised by the abyss shriek, implying that his people have never been to the abyss. So it's a bit confusing to say the least. Team Cherry has also said that they might explain how the vessels escaped the Abyss. From what we see in Hollow Knight, it appears as though the vessels were able to escape the Abyss, go up into the Ancient Basin, and somehow make it to Deep Nest, which explains why there are vessels in Nosk's lair. Given that both the White Lady and Seer appear to have been waiting for a vessel to arrive, I think there might be a little bit more going on than what we know so far. Or maybe Team Cherry just never came up with a good explanation for this. From their Reddit posts, I'm starting to think they just make this up as they go along. But enough about vague lore we might never get an answer to. Let's talk about something we do know about. Let me just find something here real quick. Uh, um, here we go. One thing we do know about is that Silksong will give us more information on Deep Nest, Hera, and the Weavers. Ari even mentioned this tablet in the Fungal Wastes that appears to mention the Old King of Deep Nest so I wouldn't be surprised if we learned about this supposed dead king. And that's about all the relevant AMA responses I could find. Aside from the obvious Deep Nest stuff, I think we will see more about the Five Great Knights and the Snail Shamans in Silksong. Let's finish off this video by talking about what the possible release date for Silksong will be. In their blog post, Team Cherry said that they have been working on this game for well over a year now, with the first pieces coming together right after Hollow Knight launched in February 2017. Team Cherry worked on Hollow Knight for about two and a half years. So if we apply that to Silk Song, that gives us a release date of around late 2019 to early 2020. The trailer looks like the game is pretty early on in development. You can see some parts of the trailer where Hornet will use their silk moves even when the bar is empty. And you even see some enemies not give off silk like the others. For this one bone crab guy, I'm pretty sure that this is a mistake. On top of that, Team Cherry has even said that making this trailer was their first chance at really getting to play the game. It's good, yeah. I mean, making the trailer has given us, given us a pretty good opportunity to, to really kind of play with her a lot and kind of get to kind of really get to grips with what actually makes her kind of fun and different. So don't expect Silk Song anytime soon. But Team Cherry did say they plan on giving us updates every so often to fill us in on what crazy things they're up to. Hopefully that will make the wait a little more bearable. Eh, who am I kidding?